Today we're gonna dive into something quite scary. Oh my god! A lot of people, I guess, they saw me expressing anger. Yes, red hot anger. I just need to get rid of this villain in my life. Because people didn't like the angry Sylvia. It got me into so much trouble. I truly woke up every day saying I hate this world. If you get rid of anger, then people can like you more and better. What were you so angry about? Everybody saw me. <gasps> My very unprofessional, explosive burst of anger, that was wrong. And that's what got you into trouble, right? By that time, it's a very crazy, violent form of anger. Whoever is angry, you are the villain, you are in the wrong. I hate humans. I hate everybody. Everything sucks. When I first went to one of my first few life coaches, the first thing I actually said was, the craziest, angriest bitch in our life is that person that we choose to be who denies the spectrum of our emotions. I was just like, substance, substance, abuse, abuse. And you can feel the anger coursing through you. And I think a lot of women's voices are being silenced like that. I was like, now what? A narcissist will never say sorry. They would rather die. I had so many addictions in my life. Mm -hmm. Want to name them? Why did you do this when I told you specifically not to do this? Are you testing me? Okay, I'm so sorry that I ruined our shoot. I'm so sorry that I'm acting crazy. This is f***ing disappointing. Whatever it is, I'm sorry. So are you an angry anymore? Hi, I am Sylvia and this is Dirty Messy Free! Hi, this is Dan. We're back in the studio. Yes, and... Wow, today. I think today we're going to dive into something quite scary mm. for me and maybe a lot of people out there, mm. right? And I thought about it. If I ever was to offend people again, mm -hmm. it would be what we'll be talking about today. Right. So what are we going to talk about today? Wow, we're going to be talking about anger. Yes, anger, red hot anger. We're going to talk about the rich tapestry of being human, right? The entire spectrum of what humanity is all about. Mm. But there's one particular emotion in this spectrum of emotions that is commonly um, vilified. Yes. Right? And that is anger. Yes. So are you an angry person? I want to say that it's quite funny mm. because I wouldn't want to put that attachment with my identity. Am I an angry person? But it sort of is, right? <laughs> No, especially after the saga, right? Uh -huh. Because you saw a lot of people, I guess, they saw me expressing anger, mm -hmm. right? And it was anger expressed in a very unhealthy manner, mm. right? That really got me into trouble, right? So it's very natural that when people see me, it's like, oh, she's the angry person. Yeah, you got a bad rap. Yes. Some of your face, huh? you know, the resting face uh, doesn't help, you know? <laughs> It is true, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh. So my relationship with anger is a very precarious one mm. because it's something that's so negative that's tied to me mm. to the point whereby I was um, struggling with this image a lot. And when I first went to one of my first few life coaches, right? The first thing I actually said was, you know what? From today onwards, I'm not going to be angry again. Anger is bad. It got me into so much trouble. Get rid of it for me. So what did your life coach say? I think she was quite stumped, right? Yeah. And she did, at that point in time, try to tell me, right? It is not something that you do away with. Yes. Right? But I think because I was so ashamed, yeah. to be shamed for being attached and associated with being an angry person. And that's what got you into trouble. Correct. So in my head, it was really, oh my God, who who caused me, you know, to be in this hot soup, right? Mm. It was because I was angry, right? Everybody saw me being having angry outbursts. Mm -hmm. So to me, the, the connection was, if I get rid of anger, I will be okay. Yes. I just need to get rid of this villain in my yes. life. Yes. If you get rid of anger, then people can like you more and better. Correct. Because people didn't like the angry Sylvia. Correct. Yes. But I've unpacked that throughout the years, of course. Mm -hmm. And I've realised a couple of things. Right? Should we go into that first? Or the strange request I got for a podcast? Let's talk about the strange request for a podcast. Yeah. Right? So what request was that? During that time when I was trying to process the anger and I was still struggling, right? I got a lot of requests for a podcast. Yeah. Right? For appearances. Why? I think people wanted me to go on a show because naturally it's going to get them... Uh, viewership. Yes. Right. But I really was in a space where I knew I needed to protect myself. Mm. I asked them, right? So you want me on your podcast, you know, what is like, what do you want from me? Mm. And the producer said something like, okay, we want to know, 
have you got an anger management settled? You know, is your anger managed now? <laughs> okay, and I felt a bit, just a bit off. Right. Like there was something wrong with that question. So I was like, so what's the ideal version of me that you would like on the show? And he was like, we want to see that, you know, you have let anger go, right? You have mellowed and now you are like, lighter and everything. So like, show us a you, right, that have let anger go. Mm. And I was like, it sounded like a reasonable request. Yes. But my heart was like, no, Sil, you cannot go on to this podcast. Right. It just feels like something was off. Off because you were not ready and you were still angry then? Or do you feel like the messaging is off if you were to go and say you let go of anger, how you let go of anger? Yes. It felt like... To them, right? They also agreed with the that anger is bad. Show us you have let it go. Right. You know, show us how you got rid of this person. And show us that now you are nice, fluffy, comfortable, mm -hmm. and you no longer will say harsh words, you know. Show a version of yourself that's like fluffy like a cloud. Then we will know that you have learned from your mistakes. Right. And I guess this speak this speaks to the whole obsession with anger as a villain in our life, right? Yes. Like, because if you did go onto the show mm. and talk about this villain, mm. then you will make for a very nice superhero Marvel movie, you know? Correct. Because it's like, we want to capitalise on that villain. Anger. It's very juicy. It's very theatrical. Yes. It's very dramatic. Mm. Right? And it makes you a villain. You're explosive. Correct. Yeah. So again, capitalising on your experience. La. And I also felt like at that point, I was thinking through a lot of things, right? And this thought came into my mind, right? Mm. If anger was so useless, right? And such a bad person, why does it even exist in this world? Mm. And in my head, it was like, be it whatever religion that you, you know, cater to, right? I think for me, it's like, imagine the universe or the creator. In my head, I was like, if it is so useless and he has no place except for all of us to let go, get rid of, why did the creator create this? Mm. Right? Mm. So I was really battling with that question in my head yeah. when I really rejected that show because I don't want to be the person that comes out after everything right, and say that anger is bad. Mm. And now that I've really sat with the darkness, sat with my anger right, and process it, I would like to say that anger is one of my best friends. I think that anger, right, is there's a lot of societal stigma attached to it. Whoever, whoever is angry, you are the villain, you are in Correct. the wrong, right? Correct. That is a, you should be ashamed yes. if you're feeling anger, right? Mm. But I feel that anger in that sense is misunderstood. Yes. It's a, it is a very misunderstood messenger. Yes. And actually, I feel that anger is our guardian angel and not our enemy. Correct. Right? And why is it our guardian angel is because its purpose, right, and its responsibility is to be that primal signal for you. Yes. To let you know that something is off, right? Mm. Your well-being is being threatened. Yes. And you need to cause correct. Mm. That's why it's actually a, like a beacon. It's like a guiding light. Yes. It is not here to harm us. It's actually here to protect our well-being. Correct. That's why we feel that anger. Correct. We feel the rage. Right, that righteous rage needs to be expressed and not suppressed. I think whatever happened in my scenario, it was so easy to uh, villainize anger because it was like a pot of water, it was boiling. Mm. It went to like 10 and then to 50. Mm. And then, you know, like 80 where you can make tea very nicely. <laughs> and then it went to 100. Mm. And like I was a kettle and I was just boiling mm. and everything is overflowing. And by, by, by that time, it's a very crazy, explosive, violent form of anger. And it can harm and hurt in that state. And yes. Yeah. But I think what people saw was Sylvia at her 120 where, ooh, everything Steaming was boily, right. boiling, yeah. right, going out of control. Eruption. And this is one thing I wanted to tell that producer that I think I can tell today, which mm. is I never needed anger management lessons. Mm. I needed self-coping mechanisms. Ah, okay. Correct. Did you have those mechanisms at that point in time? Don't have. Don't have. Okay. Correct. Yeah. My very unprofessional, explosive burst of anger, that was wrong. Mm -hmm. So I started to realise that, hey, right, 
to get to boiling point and going crazy, that is truly bad for myself and the people around yeah. me. No doubt, yeah. right? Yeah. But there is this point from zero, mm. right, to 99, mm. right, where I could have placed for myself, mm. right, coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. right, they will help really take care of the anger mm -hmm. and use it in such a productive way. Yes, we can take that emotion because in a way, the reason why it went from 10 to 50 to 100, 120 was because it was suppressed. Yes. It was unprocessed anger that leads to the eruption. Correct, right? right. So that's the coping mechanism that you're talking about. But I want to ask you, mm. what, are, what were you so angry about? <laughs> why, why are you so angry with the world, with the environment? Or was it right. with yourself? With other people. I used to have this line that I always say to one of my coaches. Mm. I met her recently and I, you know what I said to her? I'm sorry I was so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> was it the same coach you say? No, it's another one. one. Okay. Right. right. So, because the line that I always say to her, every time I meet her is, I hate humans. I hate everybody. Mm. Mm. Everything sucks. Mm. So, I want to get back to the hate space where I was really angry. I truly woke up every day saying, I hate this world. Okay. I hate everybody. Everything sucks. So, I don't say, oh, I wasn't angry. I was angry. Mm. Is this something very difficult to admit? It was difficult because you're ashamed for it and people expect that you have gotten it already by now. Mm -hmm. right? To admit that, no, I'm still angry. <laughs> you're still angry now? Uh, it's different. I'll tell you later. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. To admit that I was angry was difficult. Mm. Right, mm. but I had to process why I hated everything and everything. Right, mm. so I have to admit that yes, you are right. Right, anger is the first instinct. Mm. Right now, I know that tells me and warns me of danger. Yes. Right, mm. and I think it's also beautiful. You know, when I was you know doing my journey and thinking, I was like, oh my goodness, I wrote down anger and danger in the same sentence and. Their spelling is almost the same. <gasps> anger oh is there to warn me of danger. Yes, 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 yes. When I realized I was mind blown. Yeah. Because then I started to have a mindset. Think of the times that you were in danger. Were those times that you were angry? And it was yes. Mm. Again and again, it has warned me that say, well, you're in danger here. I think we're not in a good place here. And I suppressed and I suppressed. Mm, mm, right? Mm. So I think to give a brief overview, there were so many things that I was really angry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in a very bad place. And I don't just mean mentally. I mean physically, I was not in a place that was good for me. Mm -hmm. I say this because I think a lot of people think that I make a lot of money, yeah. you know, what doing what I used to do. I own a great part of the company, which I didn't, right? But I think one thing that I can share is that throughout many, many, many years, financially, I was broke. Mm -hmm. Like, as myself. Why, right? Because, number one, right, my pay was always a tiny fraction of what my other partners do. And the second thing was the company secretary and my ex-partner were holding on to my ATM card and my bank cards. Mm. I don't even have a bank account that I can just draw money out of. And at the time, I didn't realise how stupid and how dangerous was that position. But the truth is, if anything happened, I knew I couldn't leave. You're pretty much held hostage. I really couldn't leave, you know. Mm. I have no money to go home. Mm. I couldn't buy a plane and just, you know, go on a holiday. Mm. It was like people think that I'm really successful. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh my goodness, how much money do I have? It's the cash in my wallet. So you had no personal access to the resources you helped to build for the company. So the business had cash flow, had money, but you personally didn't benefit from that. Yes. So financially, I realise now, right, Physically, I was in a very dangerous position mm -hmm. as a human mm -hmm. and as a woman. Mm -hmm. I had no way out. Mm -hmm. I realised I was always very angry when it comes to the company. Because in my head is, why am I working so hard and I can't even get out. I can't even save myself. But you didn't voice out or challenge or ask for access. I think that's the difficult thing, right? Which my friend also asked. Still, you sound like you can ask for things. Yeah. Why didn't you ask for access, yeah. right? So, 
I'm not Singaporean. Mm. I wasn't Singaporean at that point in time, mm. right? So while I was a student, I was on student pass, you know. And then when I got married, I was on dependent pass. Okay. People might not know what's that, but it's a very scary pass to hold because every year or every two, three years, you need your spouse... To renew that for you. To yeah. vouch for you. Yes. That's why it's called a dependent pass because you're not independent, <laughs> my dear. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. It's funny because sometimes I joke with my best friend at mm, that point in time. Mm. Oh my god, babe, I'm just an illegal immigrant here. Mm. But there was this fear always. Yeah, I didn't feel secure. So when COVID came, do you know how scared I was that they're gonna like ask me to go home? Very scared. Yeah. So it is really like every day why I woke up and I was just angry is because there were parts in my life and you know Maslow hierarchies of needs. Yeah. I didn't even clear the first layer. All right, very basic stuff like safety and security. Yeah. Shelter, a sense of belonging. Yes. Very misplaced. And during this marriage or so, before I got my dependent pass, do you know I was asked to go home before? So it's not like it's in my head. I've been asked to go home because I came in a white card and then while we were processing our wedding and everything, right? We told the officer, you know, my wedding is in three months. Could I stay? He's like, no, you have to go home and then come back again with a white card. Mm, 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 mm. So it has happened to you before. Yes, right. So it's always very scary for me waking up every day. Right. Like, oh my gosh. Precarious situation. Yes, like, I don't know whether I can stay for a long time. I don't know if I will ever even get my citizenship. Mm -hmm. I don't know when he's going to renew it for me or not. Mm -hmm. Or when he will help me get my citizenship. Mm -hmm. right. So one thing that's I felt very proud of myself was I, I got that citizenship on my own accord. No? I did not need a sponsor because at that point in time, I was divorced. Mm. Right? I was like, it's either I apply on my own credit, right? Or they will just reject me, mm. right? And luckily for me, during COVID, they approved. Mm. So I could stay. Yay. Right? You want to talk about anger and where it stems from? I think that sometimes we just really don't look at the Maslow hierarchy of needs and ask ourselves, right? Mm. As a human, right? Are you safe and secure and not in a dangerous position? And I think what's kind of insidious about this is that the people who are supposed to keep you safe and provide you with a sense of belonging and safety, security, financial or otherwise, yes. they didn't give it to you. In fact, they held the keys. And it's always held in a way that you don't see. Because I really did not think anything was wrong. Because sometimes I'll be like, hey, you know, we really should get me upgraded my status. And it's like, but we're so busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no. That's always a legitimate excuse or right. reason, right? Yeah, it's like, hey, can I get my bank card back, right? right? What if we need it for, you know, that thing, you know? So it's like, oh, okay, then you... So are you saying that because you were in such a precarious, um, scary situation whereby you could have lost a lot of things, be packed back to your hometown. You were so worried of jeopardizing that position that yes. you silenced yourself and mm. you didn't voice out to ask for things that were rightfully yours. Correct. And then at that same time, the resentment and the yes. anger just keeps increasing. Correct. Right? While you continue to suppress it because that anger wasn't mm. expressed. Correct. And I feel like what anger was warning me of was, was not just we're angry here. Mm. It's, babe, you're actually very scared. Mm -hmm. You know, babe, we're actually all really worried here. All parts of us, we're actually really worried here. Right. All right. And I didn't listen to mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just pushing it down and down and down. And then obviously you saw worse things happen to me throughout mm -hmm. the years. It was just on top of all this. Yeah. Right. So you were right to say that a lot of resentment built up. Mm -hmm. Right, so the po boiling point went up higher and higher. Yeah, and and if you think about it, if anger was your friend, if I my name is anger, you see, I'm like red hot, right? Let's say my my, my name is anger right now, right? Mm. And I'm Sylvia's friend, right? And I'm giving Sylvia a warning, you know, I'm yes. saying, hey, Sylvia, hurry up, do something about this. You're in a very dangerous position. Do something, and then you like ignore, mm. right? We're busy. Okay, guess what? Then is gonna do. I'm gonna shout even louder, ma. Correct. Oi, girl, do something here. So you will continue to dial up louder and louder and louder until you do something. That's why you will erupt and ex explode. Absolutely. Because I'm your friend, you know. I'm actually trying to help you all along. Correct. Huh? And it was... And I can see anger doing that now. Mm. Right? That every time I got progressively angrier, it was because they're saying, 
oh my goodness, bitch, you have put us in a more dangerous position than before. Are you mm-hmm. kidding me? Mm-hmm. And you know that we will talk a little bit about gaslighting today. Yes, of course. Because mm. that is also a place where a lot of anger comes from. Mm-hmm. Right? So you want to share your story first or I share my gaslighting? Your story first, then I piggyback. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So my guess starting story, I'm just gonna pick one out of the many again. Okay, right? okay. Is that my ex partner was a serial cheater. Mm. Right? This is something that I had a lot of shame over because I thought it was my fault. So I never mm. spoke about it. Mm. Right. But the truth is he cheats. Early into the marriage cheated and then progressively cheat again. And I wanna talk about this one thing that also made me very confused about anger. Okay. So I think let's talk about maybe not the first time he cheated, but maybe three, four years down the road. Maybe some of you thought you were never going to see me again. At the height of my seven-figure career, I was last seen brutally cancelled online. After two years of learning my lesson the hard way, I'm back. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm Singapore's most unconventional life coach and also Sylvia's 13th and current life coach. <laughs> and we are here to, to show, show you how to heal. You. Let's burn the f- manual. Also, seeking quick fixes for our issues. New rule, we confront what makes us uncomfortable. Sitting with all our fears and despairs, it sucks. But it is the only way out. Also, chasing external success for happiness. New rule, happiness and success is an inside job. Successful people who feel empty on the inside, they are a real thing. Looking for battle-tested mentors who have been through the dirty and messy bits of life to show you how? Join us for our masterclass called How To I've spent over six figures in coaching and therapy to distill these lessons, which we are going to teach you in this one class. I'm Daniel Lim. I'm Chan Sylvia. Let's relearn How To Human. So I remember that we were shooting something, right? And we needed to take a break because I was very uncomfortable with his dynamic with a certain uh, female actress on set. And I've been hearing things. And in fact, friends in the set have been telling me, hey, Sil, you need to be wary, you need to watch out. But you know, as a person, as a woman, you're like, what do you want me to watch out? Like, what exactly do you want me to do? Like, yeah, there's actually nothing you can do, mm-hmm. right? So I was actually telling him about the dynamics and I said that it, it making me very, very uncomfortable, right? And it was reminding me of when you cheated, right? Like I can feel that sense of intuition coming back and I need you to really watch that because when I forgive you for cheating, right? We agree to make things work. Mm. Mm. So now I'm feeling I just want to voice it out. And I think the reply I remember I got was, you're seriously crazy. Are you here to ruin our day on shoot? Mm. To say this now, Mm -hmm. you're crazy. Mm. And I think I got really anger. Immediately, right? My anger rose. I was like, you know, I've been hearing things, you know? You know, and like, I really tahan until this point. And then now I'm telling you, I'm sorry I had to be on set. But, you know... Can, can I just be allowed to share this? And it became, can you stop being angry? Because being angry is wrong. Yes. Mm. And I remember that went on for quite some time because the shoot had to go on without us. Mm-hmm. Because I just really needed to have that conversation, which is, no, but I think I have a right to be angry. Mm-hmm. And it was, can you just stop being angry? Mm-hmm. You are crazy right now. You're stopping this shoot. You're ruining this whole day. Everything is going to sh- it's because of you being crazy right now, being angry with me. Double. That's a double response. Right. right. Deny and then attack. And then now make you the offender. Right. Mm-mm. So that day is also again another day that was seared in my brain that I was truly, truly very angry. So when you ask me, are you angry? Yes, that day was one of the angriest days of my life. Mm-hmm. And at that time, right, we, we talked for maybe three, four hours. But it came out like, do you know what happened at the end? I said sorry. Yeah. Yeah. In the end, after all that jazz, I remember I said, okay, I'm so sorry that I ruined our shoot. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry that I'm acting crazy. Mm-hmm. 
whatever it is, I'm sorry. And then I ended up apologizing. Mm-hmm. And then again, now I see it. That would be the day that the anger, my friend anger, got angrier. Yes. Because bitch went in, she <laughs> failed and came Massively. Home. Yeah. Oh my God. What the F? Yeah. Right. I, have, I would have been very pissed off. The anger would be very pissed off. <laughs> Imagine, right? You have this friend here. She must be so mad. Yeah. So I sent you to do this one job. Yeah, seriously. And you apologize. Are you Correct. serious, right? Correct. <laughs> yeah. And I realized, right, at that moment, again, I came home to anger, putting ourselves in an even, not just dangerous position. It started to put us in a very gaslit position. Mm. So anger is like, anger, my friend, say, oh my gosh, now you come back gaslighted. Yes. We're worse. We're yes. definitely worse off. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. A lot of resentment. That is my experience with one of the most angry days of my life. I went through the same, very similar experience. Is it one of the most angry days of your life also? Yes, I was okay. like very, like the expression was very... Right, and you see, can feel the anger yeah, rise, right, and coursing through you. Yeah, but but I think I think the the crazy thing about um people gaslighting you and manipulating you like master manipulators, right? They're very good at twisting you, arm twisting you to the point that you become so mind fucked. You start to question your your reality, yes, right, and then there's a lot of internal chaos, and you go like, what the f- just happened, right? And then they they just shift shift roles with you. All so right. mine was. Interesting. Mine was also, uh, I won't go into the details, but obviously this person did some wrongdoing towards me, my best friend of 27 years. Okay. And Oh, juicy. Yeah, of 27 years. So I was very, very pissed off because we have had a few prior conversations about yes. this already. It's always like that, right? It's not never the first it's time. It's not the first time. So it's also like you tahan, 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 right? And already saw all the red flags, all the red alarm bells already voiced out a few times yes. in as amicable a manner as possible. You know, I hope that you will get my memo, right? Mm. And I even preempted because I know what she was like. So mm. I kind of told her what not to do in case she does what I think she's going to do. Mm. Except she went ahead to do the thing I told her not to do. So you already set your boundary. Exactly. And it was violated again. Okay. So what I did was I went up to her and I said that, you know, why did you do this when I told you specifically not to do this when I knew you would do this? Are you testing me? Are you proving mm. me right? This is f***ing disappointing. Right. It's right? deliberately stepping on your boundaries and testing. Yeah, so I asked, that? I said, what do you have to say? Can you please explain yourself for this behaviour? Okay, didn't explain the behaviour. Okay, okay. What Immediately you... say, Oh, I didn't know you were angry then. <sighs> you were angry. Oh, would you like to uh, go and see a therapist together and work this through together? Davo response again. Suddenly, shifted the entire focus oh my God. On, on what happened. Help. Now it's me. You need help. Yeah, Go you, you are angry oh and gosh. I'm a very caring friend right now. I want to work this through with yeah, you. Oh I'm going to hold your hand and bring you to a therapy so we can work this together because you know what? I don't want you to see you in this state and I value our friendship so much. Oh my gosh. In two sentences, right? In one Ooh. fell swoop, gas lighted, minimized my experience, you know, and mind f***ed me. Oh my god. This is master manipulators. We have a lot of them around us. Wow, you know, Prior to this, right? Mm. I would have listened to these stories and say, yeah, she's nice and caring. But now I'm like, <gasps> she just did that pointing and saying, you need help, professional help in fact. Yeah, yeah. And for me, the old me would have been swayed, right? By this and go like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't feel angry. Yeah, I've been a bad friend. Yeah, maybe in the end, I will still go to the therapist and then I will say sorry to her in front of the therapist. Law. That would have been the old me. Mm. But at the time, I, I already did a lot of self-development work and it was towards the end of our friendship already. And it was one of those final three yep. straws that yep. broke my back. The back of the, our friendship, you know. And I went like, okay, you, one strike, you have two more strikes. You know, two more strikes, I'm fucking out of here because there's no way to explain this. And I'm like, I'm fucking not going to a therapist with you. Why am, Why do I have to go with you? I have every right to feel angry. Did she apologise that no. I... Okay, you know, I like... tell you, master manipulators, right? I want these kind of psychopaths, right? They will never... A narcissist will never say sorry. Right. They would rather die. Mm. And they're not interested in having a wholesome, healthy, responsible relationship with you. 
The only way to deal with these people is to fucking walk away. <sighs> you see, I also well, pu hui, right? Now I'm very angry, right? I talk about it, right? I'm, I'm flushed. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, anger. Yes, my friend. Our best friend, anger. It's a primal signal, and I feel that we have every right to express it. But of course, we're not condoning and advocating all of us acting on it and venting mm. and being vengeful or whatever, right? Mm. It is about the alchemy of it, the processing yes. of it, right? The understanding that this comes up really because our body wants to be safe. Yes. We put up, you know, boundaries Correct. that we really hope people who love us or mm -hmm. claim that they love us mm -hmm. will respect. Mm. And then to have all these boundaries, like, they just push it down. Correct. And anger will rise up at that point mm -hmm. to just say, hey, your best friend did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Did what we told her we don't want her to do. Cry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can feel the anger coming from you. I love you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> steaming now. I'm like 120 degrees. I feel that, right? People, wow, they, they, they guess like you and then they vilify your emotion, right? Mm. Because they want to acquit themselves of, of any responsibility. Yes. They don't want to apologize. And also, they are making you responsible for everything. And also, then it is your fault. Right? Yes, because you need anger management. Yeah, and then this is a very clever way to rob you of your voice. Yes. To silence you. And I think a lot of women's voices are being silenced like that. Yes. As to perpetuate the patriarchism in our society. Yes. You know? Oh my gosh. I think women I feel... have to speak up. And I really want to thank you for stripping away oh. the layers of this topic, you know, anger. Yes. Like, like, you know, in the previous episode, you talk about your mum, right? The cake mm. being smashed in her head. No she anger. should be angry. I, that, that's it. Yeah. I'm sure I'm her okay, best. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm going to clean up. Yeah. At that point in time, I'm sure anger rose up in her and she told it to sit down. We're cleaning this. That became up. a coping mechanism. Uh. Rise up, suppress. Rise yeah. up, suppress, right? Yes. That's the only thing yes. she knew what to do. Yeah. But you know, emotional charge and emotional energy can never be destroyed. You cannot just remove or let go. You cannot just let go of an unpleasant emotion. It doesn't work like that. Yes. It is the processing and the alchemy, right? And the transforming of that anger into something else. Correct. So my next question to you is, when did you let the anger in and out and was expressed? And how then did you alchemize and turn this let into process goal? Ooh. How? What was your process like for you? Because I think a lot of people won't know how this happens or how it looks like. Right. Yeah. I think I have to thank one of my life coaches, mm. right, for allowing me to see anger as my friend. Right. So after failing with one of the life coach, uh, getting rid of my anger, right, I went to another life coach. I said similar things to him. So help me get rid of this. You know, it's very unpleasant. You know, I didn't manage okay. to get it out. Can you get it out? Right. And I think he was the one that told me, right? Instead of letting it go, right, why don't you stop seeing it as an enemy? Yes. He's like, all this rage inside you, right? Instead of saying, go away, why don't you just sit there, right? And just steam, long, just steam. <laughs> let right? it in, let, let it, it in. in. <laughs> let it in. Yes, you know? let it in. And... Because he does shame more as well, right? Mm. So he started saying like, where is that anger? And I was like, there's a place mm -hmm. here. I don't know where. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. And as in somatically, is it? Yes, because he's Woo! a somatic coach. So yes. he was like, where is the anger? Okay. And I was like... You drew a blank. You was like, you mean it's supposed to be somewhere? No, I was like, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm just, like, what? What am I supposed to feel? Is it an air? Is it a thing? <laughs> and I think at that point, he knew how like not attuned to herself this person is yes, and yes, then yes. he was like feel it in your body then you were like what do you mean I'm feeling angry already. yeah I'm feeling so I'm like angry. my face <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so it took some time yeah, yeah, yeah. for me to realise right mm -hmm. like my anger really comes from deep within my core mm -hmm. and then it rises up is it usually the same experience vibrationally in your body when you feel anger or uh, it's different for different situations I think different for different situations okay, okay. so when I feel differently I know it's anger together with let's say shame or anger together with worriedness my, my worriedness and fear comes from behind me. oh 
so interesting. Yes. So now when I feel anger and it comes from behind, I'm like, okay, guys, I know you're here. Anger and worriedness. I got it. Let me process this for you. All of us. Right. Yeah, so sometimes when I say all of us, it means me and all my feelings. Mm. Yes. Like so, the inside out movie, you know? Yes. All the different characters. They you know, are really system. inside. Yeah, so right. cute. So that was the first time I was told to, where is it? Yeah. And it was the first time I gave anger a shape and a body. This is the difference between just feeling yes. and feeling the feeling. Yes. Right? Ooh. And it's crazy because he was like, what is the motion of the anger? I was like, now what? Yeah. It has a motion. Yeah, I He's know. He's like, what's the motion? I was like... Yeah, I know it's very cuckoo. Right. What's the texture? Yeah. Is there a smell? Correct. Is there a viscosity to it? I know. <laughs> As he sat there and yeah. gave me patience. Yeah. He didn't say, you stupid bitch, you know, you can't even see this. No, no he was like, not. I know you can feel it. And I was like, okay, I can feel it and I can feel it. And then I really start knowing that anger for me turns out like that. Like that. There is, uh, yeah, there is a kinetic energy and there's a spin to it. Yeah, yes. so I was like, so I was very doubtful. I was like, like this? Yes. Yeah, and then like he that. was like, stop doubting something that you know is there. Oh. And I was like, holy sh**. Correct. He's like, there's no correct or what, it's but what's true to you? Yes, for you. right. And that was the time I was given permission to really be allowed to see anger, feel anger, right? And to trust how it feels in your body. Yes, right. To honor it. To honor to it. Honor it. And yes. I think that was the day. My best friend, Anger, said, Oh my god, bitch finally saw me. Yes. I've been sitting here for the past God knows how many years. You just told me to get out of the house, right? Today is the first day you saw me. Like you felt my shape. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, felt yeah. my rage. My texture and my smell. Right. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you see me. Oh my goodness. And that's when you know you can never befriend something you cannot see. Yeah. Yeah. And you cannot get rid of enemies that you cannot see. Mm -hmm, like it's mm -hmm. a scary show, right? The mm -hmm. sound comes from everywhere. Yeah. You're just scared, yeah. right? Yeah. But now, anger has a shape. Yeah. Know, anger has every... You're getting to know it. Correct. So in the end, you're befriending it. Correct. You're letting it in. So that was the day I saw. So good. Saw it. And you gain a friend. Yes. And not an enemy. Correct. And when I saw it and I feel the way it moves, correct? I just realized that this isn't anything scary. It's, not at all. it's just a movement in my body. I love it. Right? It's I just a it. form of energy that's rising up in me. Mm -hmm. So that's the day when I learned not to be afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also the day when because now I can see its shape, right? Yes. Every time it comes out, I'm like, hey, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I know you. I'm familiar with you. Yes. My friend came to visit again. Come, sit next to me. Tell me. What have you got to tell me? Yes. Why are we dangerous? Correct. What are you so pissed off about? Yes. Like, who yeah. step on us now? Because sometimes yeah. I can be blind, but tell me. Because you are the one with the clear lens. Tell me. Yeah. And I think the, the, the most vicious thing that we can do to ourselves is to gaslight ourselves. Yes. You know, it's like when we have an emotion that is trying to warn us of something, right? And then we go like, uh, no, I don't think that happened. Correct. Right? Or when someone hurt you, right? You didn't even dare to say, ouch, that's not right. Correct. You like my mom. Correct. Right. Because we are so obsessed with the idea of um, uh, avoiding awkwardness or confrontation. Correct. Right? That fear of that trumps that our, our real emotion and experience of anger and being mistreated and being... Um, you know, uh, when there's injustice, we don't stand up for ourselves. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's not right. Yeah. So when you say what's the alchemy, it was really giving form to a feeling which I have never honestly valued as well. Right. Right. Because previously, I was very numb to yeah. my feelings, yeah. right? Can you imagine like there were a lot of colours in me, like colours of the rainbow, but they all clump together. Yeah. Then when you do watercolour, then you... Noir, everything uh, together. Yeah, like then it's that. just like correct. brown. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> you know? Correct. But now it was like, bloop, a red came out. Mm -hmm. And there was another group of brown. So slowly in my, you know, you know, my alchemy of self development, I slowly could extract colors. Green came out, mm -hmm. blue came out. Mm -hmm. So now I could see, a, you know, a really a range of emotions, which mm -hmm. is why I went from somebody who was so numb and I hate working with feelings because it's brown. Why would I like it? Yeah. Right? But now I'm like seeing, oh, this is a rainbow, mm -hmm. you know? So, and I know its shape, I know how it feels. So I'm not 
it feels familiar now mm -hmm. that I can identify it. Yeah, because I think I, I love that life coach, right? I mean, the love. previous one did it. Did, the previous one didn't work because tried I, to eradicate anger correct. for you. Tried to that's eradicate. That's not the way. Yes. Then the next one said no. Instead of eradicating, there is no eradicating because that's correct. the wrong approach. And well, it's it will not even happen. Correct. Right? You're just gaslighting yourself, right? Correct. Suppressing, numbing yourself, denying the real emotion. The trick is to open up to it, right? Lean into it, let it all in, and then not only that, enjoy it. Like we can actually get to a point where we enjoy discomfort in our body. You know, yes. this high level stuff, like, By the way, I but love I think it. what the coach did was to um, equip you you with the al the alphabets yes. of it's, it's like literacy like educating mm. you uh, arming you with a emotional language and fluency yes. right yes. otherwise because a if we don't know anger. yeah if we don't know the a to c <laughs> right a for anger mm, i don't know like f for frustration you know mm. even being able to name our emotions with nuance yes. right if people ask you how are you uh, okay law how am i happy law yeah brown Brown. Yeah, it's just like happy or unhappy. <laughs> Cannot. We have mm. to have more nuances in how we call our emotions out. And yes. it's just like increasing our literacy. Yes. And then you start to enjoy it. Because before you can enjoy a book, right? You need, you need to, to learn your alphabet. If Correct. not, you open the book, how to enjoy, you'll be like, just throw away. And yes. a lot of people will approach emotions like that also, right? Mm. Calm, unpleasant, run away, mm. deny, buffer, numb ourselves, Netflix and chill, you know, yes. watch porn, you know, one night stands, you know, bye, 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 eat, 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 drink, yes. drink, drink. Oh my gosh, now that you mention it, right, I also realised once I've learned to alchemize and feel all these feelings, and it's not just anger, right? It was also the other things, anxiety, yes, shame, fear, shame, fear, judgment, right? Yes. Once I realised this, a lot of my addictions went away, mm. right? And this is also something that I've always hidden from the public. Okay, come. What is it? I had so many addictions in my life. Mm -hmm. Why don't you name them? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Right. Name your addictions. So I'll start with the easy ones first. So mm. I was addicted to coffee. You might think small one, but mm -hmm. this is just number one. Mm. Right? But you know how much coffee I was drinking every day? By morning, by 11, three long black straight. You know? Mm. Like I live my life crazily like that, just downing myself in coffee throughout the day. Mm -hmm. That by the night, if mm -hmm. my hand is not shaking, I didn't have enough. Mm. I needed my hands to shake. Mm. That was comfortable for me. Mm. The high bars. Yes. It's a numbing mechanism actually. By the I way. think it was funny at that time. But mm -hmm. in my office, there were bottles and bottles of liquor. I day drink. I, I was a day drinker, which is why it's not funny. It's so different now. You drink tea, yeah. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I was day drinking while typing emails to clients. Ooh. Lots of numbing. Yes, and I never realised that was wrong. And because you know why? There are certain addictions that have a very good rep. Coffee has a good rep. So mm -hmm. you don't see it as much of an addiction. It's like, oh, we all need coffee, yes. Mm, it's lifestyle. Yeah, right? Yeah. Even if you're drinking, it's like, yes, girl, have that champagne. Yes, so yes. it's like a non-negative notion you know, attached to it. Mm. So I was day drinking and nobody said anything, mm. right? But the worst thing I was doing was that I was smoking a lot. Mm, okay. And people don't know how much I smoke. I want to say how bad it was. Mm. I was smoking two packs a day. Wow. That is 40 sticks. And when I was doing the quitting program, right? Do you know 40 sticks meant every 10 minutes I was lighting up? Pretty much, yeah. Every 10 minutes of the day that I was working, I was lighting up. Yeah. It means that I was not even breathing oxygen in my life yeah. anymore. Yeah. I was just like, substance, substance, abuse, abuse. And I never knew what I was doing to myself. Mm -hmm. right? And can you imagine how angry my body was? Yeah. I bet anger is like this bitch. So much intoxication. <sighs> you know? Yeah, but the reason why we do that is that is a coping mechanism Correct. but it's an unhealthy kind, right? It's Correct. because what happens is that these numbing mechanisms allow you to temporarily dissociate from the unpleasantness of the emotion that Correct. you're not willing to process. Correct. But guess what? When you stop all that, right? That emotion that's unprocessed is still there except it's even louder now. It's even mm. more intense. Correct. Not that, not a sustainable way at all. Because guess what? You're going to next smoke, smoke three packets, four packets, five packets a day. Exactly, right. No, no. So I was abusing myself in that way. Yeah. That's when I also realised, right, that when I don't process anger right, mm. right, mm. when we use these things to mm -hmm. numb it, mm. you can go really longer 
tahaning anger, but one day you will still burst. It's inevitable. I always like to have this analogy, right? I feel that when we suppress our emotions or we don't deal with the sh- that needs to be dealt with because yes. it's unpleasant. What we do is essentially, imagine you're in a swimming pool and you have this inflatable ball and you're just pressing yes. it down, right? And you have, use energy to suppress, right? So people on the outside, you yourself see, there's no ball, ma. no ball, mm. no ball. You can do this for fucking 100 years, right? Yes. The moment you let go of your hands, right? Boop, come out. Oh. Correct. It's the same. Yes. Right? It's like prolonging the inevitable. The mm. root cause doesn't go away. You have to solve things at the root cause and not treat symptoms. Mm. Mm. Yes, correct. Right. Mm. So in my process of alchemy, that is one thing I've realised oh, so as cool. well. I, I have to it. let go of the numbing things I was putting in. Mm. That was also, in a way, blurring my vision. Mm-hmm. Because when you're numb, you're like, hey, 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 with your friend, you forget. Hey, but how do you do it? Because from like 40 sticks, from so many cups of coffee to day drinking, huh, when <laughs> you remove all that, there is a lot of unpleasantness that all comes up, you know. At the same time, you know, yes. how do you process? It is a lot less about willpower. But more about? More about when you don't need addictions, it also signals that all your... Yeah, there's a lot more balance and harmony in your body. Yeah. So it's actually a vicious cycle. When you're in such imbalance, you need all these things. Yeah, okay. So, so you know, I, I, I feel that um, when we talk about why kicking kicking off an addiction is tough, right? It's because we're approaching it from the um, lens of managing an urge that Correct. comes up, right? Correct. But if you solve things at the, the root cause, right? when you start to process all the unpleasantries, the root cause, which is the anger, the emotions that we were afraid to, to look at, yes. what happens is that the desire for that substance goes, goes away. away. You don't even desire it anymore. In Correct. fact, it starts to annoy you and you start to go like, I want to vomit. Correct. So I actually did this uh, talking to. So I befriended secrets. I actually said. Sorry, sorry, again, please. <laughs> uh, hello? Why is no, this? Why is no, this? I know it's quite funny, right? What? So the same way that I dealt, um, you know, befriended anger, okay. right? I quitted in a way that nobody would quit, right? So people is always like, win it off, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I quitted the day that I remember I went downstairs, bought one carton because bitch here never buys one pack. She buys by the carton. <laughs> Hardcore. Hard right? I uh-huh. opened one, right? Put it in my treasured drawer. Uh-huh. Oh, took one stick and then smoked that stick. So imagine I had nine new packs and 19 new sticks. Mm. After I smoked that stick, you didn't want the rest anymore. I was like, I think I'm ready to quit. <laughs> And it's crazy because they always say like, don't put it in, in, in sight, right? No, mm-hmm. it was lying right there. The 19 sticks was on my table. The entire time I was quitting. The nine packs were right there at that drawer. Yeah. So I actually needed to have a conversation with my addiction with cigarettes. And I oh. actually sat down and stop seeing it. the same way I stopped seeing anger as a pathology, something to be fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also stopped shaming, you know, my smoking behavior as something that was bad. Mm-hmm. I really went into this place and said, the first thing I said was, "Secret, you were my best Thank friend." Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, like I was in such a bad place, mm. right? That I really needed something to soothe me, mm. and unfortunately, right. I came to you, but you served your purpose as well. Yeah, but my contract with you is going to expire really soon. And yes. it starts now. <laughs> it is true. It's, it was really not putting shame to it. Because, yeah. by the way, I went to the doctor to get nicotine patch, which I never used, used yeah. right? Because I felt like it was, again, like, I'm wrong, you know, anger is wrong, fix this, throw it away. Yeah. And I was like, I cannot use this framework because it never seems to work. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. if I approach it from another way, yeah. which is, thank you. Love, kindness, compassion. Yes. Instead of treating it, like you say, as a pathology, something yes. to be treated. Like there is, there is it's an illness, it's a disease. Correct, right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I thank my packet of cigarettes. And I do believe, right, at that moment... It was like a very amicable breakup. Ooh, you know, it that. was also like smoking saying, it's true, you're in a better place. You really don't need me, me anymore. Now. I wish yeah. you all the best. Correct. Oh, I'm always here. 
Yes. Right? You can always have access to me. Yes. It's, it's, this reminds me of the Lord of the Rings, you know, Galadriel, and then she put on the, the, the ring and then it's like she was trying to Correct. fight the, you know, the, yes. the evil in the ring. Yes. So you still have access to the secrets anytime, but it has no more hold. Correct. No more attraction over you. Mm. No more desire for it. You don't yeah. even have to manage and urge. Correct. Mm. Yeah. So mm. it was that. And the same way I said bye to alcohol, mm. like, mm. you were fun, you were the fun one though, mm -hmm. right? But again, Again, right, it was easy to quit when I acknowledged what they helped me with in a way. Yeah, I love that. Stop shaming and hating. That is the them. alchemy, I think. It's, it's crazy. all part and parcel process of the processing. Okay, so if people say anger management, this is mm. how it looks like. Yes, it's not whip it and say you're bad, go away. Or, it's or, not. or to um, excise it or to cut it out like a tumor. Yes, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. It's really with a lot of love and compassion. <sighs> Right? Yeah. Crazy how the alchemy process worked. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes when I drink coffee, right, I'm always like, yo, old friend, you know, mm -hmm. I'm seeing you in a different light now, mm -hmm. you know. You know, I used to go through life with, uh, oh, I need coffee, you know. It was mm -hmm. such a over... Okay, now I see all these bad things as friends. Mm -hmm. So if, imagine if coffee is a friend sitting mm -hmm. right here. I used to be that clingy friend to coffee. Mm -hmm. I need you in the morning, please. Very Come. Indeed. Yeah, even though I cannot work, you know, I'll go crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? But now I also feel like I have a better dynamic with coffee in that mm -hmm. sense. Like now, whenever I meet this friend, I'm no longer my clingy self. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, oh, I can enjoy yes, you. Yes, yes. I can smell your aroma. Yes, you know, this yes. is such a good, healthy relationship with you now. Yeah. Hey, I think you really should start uh, this like quitting clinic, like almost like a <laughs> quitting protocol for people, how to befriend your addiction. Yes. I think you should really teach that. And I think process. really when we talk about dirty, messy, free, right? Mm -hmm. The freedom really comes from I feel free that I no longer fear all these negative feelings. Yeah. You know, I feel free that now all these things that used to scare me, that people villainize, mm -hmm. I'm able to see them as part of my life, mm -hmm. as friends. Mm -hmm. They're not out to harm me. I think mm -hmm. that to me mm -hmm. is why free is important for me, you know, in the name of this podcast. Mm -hmm. I think freedom mm -hmm. comes from that. Thank you for saying that. I feel that true freedom doesn't come from us, like, you know, um, uh, or getting into a bubble whereby we don't have any unpleasant emotions or none of the bad shit happens to us. That's not a free life. That's a, at best a delusion and yes. a fantasy. A truly free life is like no matter what happens, we have got ourselves, right? Correct. And I always say that if there isn't any emotion that we are, un we are afraid of processing, right? If you're okay to let anything in, Correct. right? Then you become invincible. Yes. And then you become truly free. Yes. Right. That is the formula. Yeah. So yeah, that was how I kind of used that same framework mm -hmm. to befriend mm -hmm. the dark things, mm -hmm. to befriend the addictions and to befriend all the difficult things in my life. I love it. Yeah. So it's also fun, right? Because now, you know, when I have coaches, right? And they come into this space feeling, you know, very down and heavy with these feelings, right? I could, I feel like I've gained a superpower in a sense mm. that I could be like, hey, yo, old friend, you know, anxiety, you're sitting on her shoulder right now. I actually can spot you. Yes. Right? So yes. I feel like this language, this fluency is so important for all of us. Yeah. And I think this is a responsibility as life coaches, right? It's like um, we have been through that where we initially saw these unpleasant emotions as our enemies. Yes. Right? But now we have a very different relationship with them. And then this Xiao Mei Mei or Xiao Titi comes in and say, I don't want to feel angry anymore. Mm. Can you get rid of it for me? Yes. Now, which life coach do you want to be? The first life coach that says, yes, I'm going to help you get rid of your anger. Because it's unpleasant, it's not good, it's your enemy. Mm. Or do you want to be the life coach that says, boy or girl, I think you've got it wrong. Yeah. And I'll tell you my story. Yes. And it begins with... Yeah! Right! Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, anger. Still an angry bitch, right? Yes. I, I want to tell you, I feel that the craziest, angriest bitch in our life actually is not the person who like go like, or whatever, yeah. you know, or, or whatever, curse and swear. The craziest, angriest bitch in our life, right? is that person that we choose to be who denies the spectrum of our emotions. Yes. And I feel also, right, now that I realise anger is not wrong, I also ask myself, right, mm. you know, back to that producer who say, have you let go of your anger? Come when you let go of your anger. I'm like, honestly, life is really not all smiles. No, not right? at all. 
it's really about the valleys and the peaks and the, you know, there's day, there is night. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be 50% of negative things in our life or mm -hmm. negative emotions. Mm -hmm. The contrast, the polarity is what makes us experience the full spectrum of what being a human being is like. Yeah. So, if people say like, are you still an angry person? I'm like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm angry because people like my mother still exist mm -hmm. where they swallow their anger. Right? Mm -hmm. Why am I not angry? I should be very angry that, you know, the way that things work, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you see your dad hitting your mom. That's injustice. It needs to are be you voice. supposed to pop champagne and say, I'm so happy? Right? I feel like every feeling has its place to tell us different things. So would you have approached things differently right now if your dad did the same thing to your mom with the cake? How would you have processed it? Wow. Would you would you actually speak up with a strong voice and say that is not okay, Dad? So currently, right, in my relationship with my family, right, I think my brothers, because I've been doing self-work, I feel like it elevates the whole family. When one person of do self-work, right? That's why it's called other people work as well. I, I keep saying this. Right. So yes. I don't need to like, oh, you need to go live coaching to my brothers. No, right. right. They start to see that I've shifted a little bit. Exactly. Right. And I feel like the whole family now is out of that blind place where we feel like that was that's correct. You know correct. why? Because you are high vibration now and then molecularly, you will affect the interactions that you have with the people. Even if they don't do any work, yeah. you will lift people up. Then over time, they'll be very aware and yes. then they go like, eh, hey, girl, what do you eat? How come you like that now? Correct. You know, then you will share with them. Then when they are ready and the time is right, mm. they will hear and then they'll be opening up. They will be very Correct. open to doing the work themselves. Yes. Then we just elevate one another. Yes. It's about lifting. Yes, I really feel like these things okay, flow okay, and will okay. flow. Okay. Right. So, you know, I told you my, my dad is being a, a very difficult again for mm -hmm. Chinese New Year, mm. right? And now I had I have the ability, right, to t say, Mom, you know, you don't have to do this anymore. You don't have to say it's okay. Mm -hmm. So it was the first time re in recent mm -hmm. years that when she says it's okay, I will immediately correct her on the spot. Mom, it's okay to say that it's not okay. Yeah, yeah. You know? But that comes from a place of respect as well because she has her own autonomy, right? What she chooses to do with your advice or what you have got to say is up to her. Correct. But that's not going to stop you from voicing your thoughts yeah. from a loving space. Correct. So now I will always give her a lot more options. Yes, options. Right? And say that, you know, you know, I don't see other people doing that. But see this happening to you, you know it's okay. Yeah. If you are hurt, right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to always defend him, right? Yeah. You know you have choices. I just yeah. put all the choices in front of her. Yeah. So now, this is how I process it, right? So sometimes, I feel like she's slowly waking up. Yeah. In a sense that, yeah, ho. You know, I feel right. the parent, daughter, parent, son dynamic, uh, so we always feel that the kids are here to learn from our parents, right? Sometimes right. it's the other way around. Yeah. Now, like now you're educating and equipping your mom with emotional frequency, uh, not frequency, fluency, Correct. and also options. I think that's very powerful yes. because she didn't demonstrate any other viable options to you. No. But now you know that there are yes. maybe at least another three or four more options. Ma. So now she knows, I right? You. Oh, I don't need to do A, I can do B, C, D. So one of the options that I actually told her and I. Is something that I've learned also is I never knew this but then we have the power to walk away. That is our greatest power. It's not to mediate. It's not to engage. It's not to change the other person. It's manipulate not. the other person so yes. you feel better. No. It is to disengage. Yes. Walk away. And walk away. So that is one of the things that when I was alchemizing, I realised, oh my goodness, I can walk away from things that are triggering me or so, right? So that is one thing that I've taught my mom, and she's using it quite often. So what have you walked away? Tell me. Name five things you have walked away. Oh my goodness. I have... Wow. I have changed up my entire social circle. Wow, really only a handful left that belong in the old space. Mm -hmm. right? So you walk away from a lot of uh, mm, friends, yes. acquaintances from the past. Yes. Okay, right. what else? I've walked away with my relationship with people who are not good for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and these are not friends. These are difficult relationships. Mm -hmm. Right, and mm -hmm. I say that is also with my dad. Right, I've walked away from the very obligatory, 
relationship with him that I must be filial no matter how much hardship you give me I must stay and tank it all mm. now I've learned to walk away right when dad is being a little Mm-hmm. We will all go out and have tea. This engage, yeah, it's so smart. Right, I know that relationships are not all relationships you can walk away from. Yeah, from those that you will still have to stay. I've also learned how to walk away in a practical Minimize way. Minimize the connection time, right? Yeah. The shame mm-hmm. I had when I was being cancelled, that version of me, right? I've walked away from that shame because I know that punishing myself further is not going to get me any further. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I really had to walk away and that was an al- al- alchemy of shame work that I did. Mm. I've walked away from my very bad relationship with work and rest. <gasps> Right now, you know, right? Oh Wednesdays, Sylvia doesn't work. Saturday, right. Sylvia doesn't work. Right. right. So that is crazy for me. For so much power. Right. I walked away from and so, so many attractive. Things. I really like this, Sylvia, where you have very clear boundaries, yes. priorities, values mm. that are grounded and not to prove anything, you know? Right. Not so that people can like you more, no. you know? In fact, a lot of these boundaries potentially will make you be, make people like piss off at, at you, right? But yes. you're like, so be it. So be and it. And so it is. Yes. Yeah. And it's amazing because it's funny, right? So introvertedness, right? Mm. I have to walk away from that performative play yeah. that I was playing, you know, to be yeah. that fun person, extroverted person. Mm. So I really lean into my introvertedness. You're, you're befriending, you've befriended your introvertedness as yes. well. Yes. Oh. I used to think you're such a villain, right? Yes. Yeah, so useless, right? Oh my God. So it's gotten to the point that it's quite funny yeah. that my family, my brothers especially, right? Because they now they're also into self work and things, right? Mm. So during a uh, countdown this year, mm. right, 2023 to 2024, right? Mm. During the countdown, my brother came to me and he's quite funny. He's like, <laughs> So, us and our girlfriends, we are going to a New Year party with our group of friends. Mm-hmm. Maybe 10 old people. Very fun group of people, right? Mm-hmm. I've already told them that. that you do not like loud noises. You do not like crowds. And even though it's a special occasion, right? You are likely not going to come. Oh. But they told me to ask you anyway. So, I'm asking, but I know you're going to say no. And I said, no, I'm not going. And he says... Oh. I told them so. Yeah. Right? And I love it because if there wasn't such a healthy dynamic, right? It was so easy for a brother to say that. It's count down, you know. All like, right. what is your bloody problem? Correct. You know, you think you are up there. You Correct. don't need to Right? Correct. But I feel like because I put out these boundaries and I walk away from yep. all these things, yep. right? Yeah. People respect that as yep. well. Yeah. And also what I like about your brother is... Uh, this, your brother is becoming this guardian <laughs> angel, right? We, we can yeah, uh, agree on that already. Yeah. But what I love is that even though he knew your boundaries, it didn't stop him from still coming up to you and giving you the option of should you want to join us, you yes. can. This is truly honouring other people's um, boundary and also honouring their own desire to have you join them. Correct. But not making it mean anything should you say yes, yes or, or no. no. So spacious. Yes. So much respect and honouring... <laughs> one another so beautiful this is true love law I tell you it's really so good I love it right and I was at home you know I was watching uh, I was doing the anyway so you know I go to Saguru and his uh, workshops quite often so I was watching Saguru's uh, countdown instead at home (laughs) and their IGS at the same time and commenting looks fun awesome have more drags right it's a remote party yeah right and I'm so happy I to be it. in this space, right, where I know that you are allowed to walk away from yes. things. Yes. You know? And w- you know what's the beauty? The beauty is when we allow that and we give that to ourselves, yeah. we also give it to other people Correct. when they choose to walk away from something. Yeah. Like, if they don't want to come to our party and they tell, we ask them, they don't want, we don't make it a thing. Correct. We go like, go. Whatever you want, Whatever brings you joy and peace yes. and comfort, go. You don't have to be anything that you don't want to be. Correct. Because I love you. Yeah. I don't want you to contort. Yes, I don't want to perform. Don't Not even the, 10%. the world will be a much better place? Yes. Right? We came from anger. Mm-hmm. But I hope people also can see that when you process it right, anger can go to a good place. Yes. Right? And I also want to say right, that I'm not shaming, I'm not hating on yeah. people who are angry. Yeah. Because... I know firsthand how painful it is to be in that loop. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And I never want any of my coaches or people out there who are listening, right, 
to say the same thing that I used to say that I must be wrong because I'm angry. You no, know, never say I don't that. want you to always be the one to be the first to say sorry, even when you're being gaslit. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm only really talking about this today because I know it's a very painful place to be. Mm-hmm. And I know that a big change needs to happen to yeah. befriend anger. Yes. You know? Yeah. So that's why I say, you know, some people might be really confronted with what I'm saying today. They'll mm-hmm. be triggered. They mm-hmm. might say, I don't know what they want to say about mm-hmm. this radical thing they're representing about anger. Yeah. I don't think it has been put out, you know, really in the space mm-hmm. that anger is our best friend. Mm-hmm. In- anger can be a very good friend. Yes. Right. And again, we are presenting options. I think what we're doing here is sharing our experiences, our take, and there are multiple takes. Yes. Right? It's like you look at an elephant. Is this part of the elephant? The ears? Yes. You look at the tail. Is this an elephant? It's also an elephant, right? Mm. So I think it's an invitation. It's just giving you more options to look at these emotions that might mm. be very unpleasant, mm. right? You get to decide what your relationship is going to be Mm. with anger. If you want to befriend it or you want to treat it as an enemy, Mm. totally your choice because you get to be whoever the fuck you want to be. Yeah. Right? No control. We give you a lot of space as well. Yeah. Right? But it's so nice. I mean, particularly just now when you say, I'm happy because... And and it's so nice to hear that from you. You can feel the spaciousness. Yeah. And in a way, I feel that the flow of today's episode was also kind of demonstrating the power of alchemy. Yes. Like we started off like red hot chili peppers and it's just feel this spaciousness that we have right now. Mm. This calm, this peace, this joy, yes. this okayness. Yes. Almost feels pleasant now. Yeah. Right? This warm glow. I will do everything to protect the peace that I have today. Mm. Right? And I know just how tough it is to calm here. Yes. Right? You know, I'll be always happy to share, you know, all these things that I've personally done to get myself out of difficult places mm-hmm. or to befriend dark and heavy emotions. Mm-hmm. It yes. wasn't like I went online and find some concepts or I went for a psychology class and studied. it. Yeah. It's really experience experimenting it myself and seeing what really got me out. You live through that thing, yeah. The framework, right. you live through yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And I'll be always happy, right, to share any of these, right? Mm-hmm. Be it stories, be it what I've done, right? Be it tips and tricks or even hacks that I feel work for me, mm-hmm. right? With our Dirty Messy Free community. Yeah. And I think there are resources from um, your hard-worn battles. Yeah. Hard-worn battle. Yeah. Everything is very hard-led, heart-centric. And... You know, it's almost like you had to burn yourself to distill these insights and wisdom. Yeah. And I think that the uh, curriculum that is sorely missing in our schools, mm. right, in our family upbringing, is the language of emotional fluency, yeah. right? And today we talked a lot about anger, but it's just one of the many emotions. Mm. We have a lot more. Anxiety is a biggie. In mm. this world right now. Right? We'll talk about fear in an upcoming episode as well. Yeah, so lots more to come. So um, let's normalize um, our relationship with emotions, you know, talk more about it because we have gone through generations and generations of um, forefathers, you know, where they denied and minimized emotions, right? So it can change from our generation yes. where we let the emotions in, mm. we befriend our emotions and let them nourish and guide us mm. and so that we have a powerful voice. There mm. is self-healing, there is self-coaching yes. and then we are resilient, we thrive, we are healthy and we yes. have our well-being. Yes. Mm. And I suddenly remember something. Remember I said that, I said that anger wants of danger? Yes. <laughs> In the word courage, what word do you see? Rage. Right. So I start to realise. Oh, so good. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when yeah, I saw yeah, anger, yeah. I was like, I'm also very ragey. What word becomes rage? And I was like, oh my goodness. Courage. Yeah, so the rage needs to be there because it's righteous rage that will call forth your courage for positive yes. change. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode.